Hello and welcome to this Astranti pre-scene video series. My name is Tom Marlowe and I'm a senior content creator at Astranti and I'm going to be the OCS tutor for this sitting. So I'm going to be the one taking you through this pre-scene analysis series. So a bit about myself, I've written the industry analysis for three prior case study exams and I was the OCS tutor at the previous OCS sitting as well. Now, outside of my role in the case study team at Estranti, I've worked at all three levels of the SEMA professional qualification, primarily on the P pillar, so P1, P2, and P3. I also answer student questions on BA1, P1, and OCS. So now that I've introduced myself, I'll now talk you through what we'll be covering in our pre-scene analysis video series. And we'll start off by going through the pre-scene document section by section. And of course, I'll be picking out some of the key points, the characteristics of the company that I think are the most important and also the most likely to be examined when it comes to your OCS exam. And in order to help me to do this, I will be applying business models where appropriate, like SWOT and Pestel, to help us to analyze the business position of our case study company. And of course, I will also be relating aspects of the pre-scene company to recurring issues and syllabus topics that I think are likely to come up in the exam itself. As well as this, I'll also try to give you some top tips along the way to help you to get the best marks when it comes to your exam. So this is the pre-scene analysis video. On top of this, I will also be taking you through a strategic analysis and I'll be using the rational planning model to guide this strategic analysis itself. Now you don't need to know about this model just yet in terms of your SEMA studies. However, what it does do is provide us with an effective framework to consider the pre-scene company's strategy in detail. So by having a good idea of where the company is likely to be headed going forward, this can help you to shape the answers that you write in the exam. And so you can provide recommendations and so on in alignment with the company's strategy. After the strategic analysis, I will then be discussing the top 10 issues that we've identified that are most likely to be tested in your exam. So now that I've introduced you to the three videos in the series, I'll now discuss them in more detail. And I'll start by talking about the pre-scene analysis video. So in this video, as I've touched upon, I will be going through the pre-scene analysis document section by section, and I will be assuming no prior knowledge as I progress. I'll be tackling each page that it comes and giving my thoughts as we progress through this document. So in terms of the way you should use this video, ideally you should read a section of the pre-scene by yourself, make your own notes, identify your own key points, and then after that you should then watch my video analysis of that same section. And then you can compare your own notes to the notes I make and the points I'll be raising in the video. As after all, you might pick up things that I haven't, but vice versa as well. I might notice something that you might not have. So by the end of this process, you will have a better insight into the pre-scene company overall. Once I reach the end of a section in the pre-scene document, I will be giving my review of it. So again, where relevant, I'll be doing a SWOT or a Pestel analysis to give a review of what I've learned to sum up the section. And then after going through the whole document, I will then be taking you through a full strategic analysis of the company and again the top 10 issues. So the full strategic analysis will flesh out your knowledge of the pre-scene company and again give you more context in terms of the way it's aiming to progress going forward. And then the top 10 issues will help relate the issues that we've raised, the key points we've identified, and then contextualize them in terms of the SEMA syllabus and the way that we think SEMA are likely to test those topics. So before I get into the video series itself, I will now talk about the way that you should use the knowledge you'll be gaining of the pre-scene company. So the aim of this video series is to give you context to the unseen material that SEMA will be giving you in the case study exam. So the key points that we'll be identifying will act as signposts to the content that SEMA is likely to test in the different variants of the OCS exam. However, when it comes to the exam itself, make sure that you deal with the tasks given to you in the exam. So you're applying your knowledge of the pre-scene company in an ad hoc way. That is to say, you shouldn't just pre-write responses to exam questions you think might come up and then regurgitate those pre-written responses in the exam. You need to tailor the answers you write in the exam to the specific questions that you've been asked. What this pre-scene analysis will give you will be a background level of knowledge. That is to say, it'll give you plenty of ideas for you to build on in a relevant way during the exam. So they can be used to help guide the answers you give to make sure they're in line with the key characteristics of the pre-scene company. 
That is to say, any recommendations you make during the exam can be made based off the analysis here in conjunction with your own analysis where this is appropriate. So now that I've introduced this pre-seen video series, let's now get right into the analysis itself. So let's start with the very first section of the pre-seen document. So let's now take a look at the pre-seen documents for the operational level case study exam, November 2021 and February 2022. And this time around, the pre-seen company is called Tread Cushy, and it designs, manufactures and sells trainers, as we'll see in a moment. So I'll start off by giving you a quick run through of Seema's COVID-19 statement relevant to this case study exam. I'll then go through the contents page of this document to give an outline of the structure of this video series. And then after that, we'll get right into the main body of the pre-seen document. So first of all, what does Seema have to say about COVID-19 in relation to the case study exam? So Seema make it clear at the outset that the case study exam is set in a context where the COVID-19 pandemic has not had an impact. So while speaking in general, the case study exam is all about the application of the SEMA theory to the real world and to the case study company, the COVID-19 pandemic is a bit of an exception, as SEMA advised that candidates for the case study exam assume that COVID has not had an impact on the movement of people, goods or services. However, there is some leeway here. That is to say, if you do happen to make a relevant reference to the pandemic, then this reference to the pandemic will be marked on its merits. So if it's a valid point, you will get marks for it. However, in general, SEMA and myself would advise you to avoid referencing or considering the impact of the pandemic in general. So now let's turn to take a look at the contents page for this pre-seen document. Now I've colour coded this contents page so you can see which aspects of the pre-seen document are covered in which videos in this series. So highlighted in purple here is the contents of video one. So in the first video, we'll be covering your role in the context of the OCS exam, an introduction to Tread Cushy, the pre-seen company for this sitting, of course, as well as two extracts from the Tread Cushy website. After that, in video two, we'll be looking at the company's directors, the company's production, sales and distribution, and finance teams, as well as the first part of the other information we're given about Tread Cushy's operations. And these bits are highlighted in yellow here on the contents page. In the third video in this series, we'll then be covering the remainder of the other information that we're given about the company's operations. As we can see that this section is relatively long, covering pages nine to 15, and therefore it's been split into two separate videos. After that, in the fourth video, we'll be looking at the information we're given in the pre-seen document about the industry for athletic shoes, highlighted in teal here. Additionally, we'll also be covering the articles, that is, fictional newspaper articles that were given in the pre-seen document on page 24 and 25. So the reason being is that these articles also give some hints regarding trends and developments in the industry. So these two parts of the pre-seen document do link together quite nicely, and this is why they're both covered in the same video, which will be video four. Moving on to video five, we will be looking at the financial statements for Tread Cushy for the year ended 30 June 2021, as well as the tax regime in Keyland. So again, two sections of the pre-seen document somewhat related to one another, and therefore covered in the same video five. Then in the sixth and final video in the series, we'll then cover the budget information for the year ended 30 June 2022, highlighted here in orange. So by going through the contents page and highlighting it in this way, you can see which part of the precinct document is covered in which video, which should hopefully enable you to identify the part of the video that you want to watch if there's a specific part of the precinct document that you would like to see covered. So now that we know the contents that's going to be in the actual pre-seen document itself, let's now start at the very beginning by taking a look at your role. Now on the surface, the job and role outline seems pretty small. It seems like a relatively inconsequential part of the pre-seen document. However, if you skipped over it in your own reading of the pre-seen, I'd actually advise you go back and take a closer look at it as the role description paragraph given here actually provides some guidance as to the exam requirements for the OCS. That is to say, it's not just your knowledge of the E1, P1 and F1 topics, it's your ability to apply these to a real world context that's being examined. So in the exam, SEMA tests your ability to apply this knowledge 
by asking questions in the context of scenarios that aim to mirror real life. And to situate you in the scenario, SEMA give you more information about the role you'll be adopting in the exam. So specifically, you are a finance officer working in the finance department of the company. So what is a finance officer? So a finance officer sits in the organizational structure immediately below the finance manager. Above the finance manager is the finance director and above them is the managing director. As such, you will be reporting directly to the finance manager who in turn reports to the finance director and so on. So what does this mean in terms of the kind of task that you'll be presented with in the OCS exam? Well, you're working at the operational level and so you will be producing operational level information. And importantly, this means that your role will have a short term focus with regards to the information you'll be working with and the analyses that you'll be conducting. You'll be passing your work up the organisational hierarchy to people who will then be making longer term decisions. So you could summarise your role as a finance officer by saying you compile information and then provide analysis. So the compiling information aspect of this role is your chance to demonstrate your knowledge of the syllabus and then in terms of the analysis, this is your chance to then apply it to the pre seen company, in this case, Shred Cushy. So moving on to SEMA's paragraph under your role, your role involves the preparation of management accounting information and providing information to managers to assist with decision making, in addition to assisting with the preparation of financial statements and answering queries regarding financial reporting and other financial matters. So now that we've seen SEMA's description of your role in the case study exam, we can now consider how this description relates to the OT subjects. And to help us to do this, we can look to the key learning outcomes outlined in SEMA's blueprint for the OCS exam. Now each of these six key learning outcomes have attached levels of weighting, and this gives us a hint as to the focus on each topic when it comes to the exam. So key learning outcomes A and B relate to costing and budgeting, and are worth a weighting of between 12 and 18% and 17 to 25% respectively. And both of these concern the P1 syllabus. So everything that concerns the P1 syllabus here, I've highlighted in green. And these two key learning outcomes, of course, relate to the first line of SEMA's description of your role, that is the preparation of management accounting information. Meanwhile, key learning outcomes C and E cover both P1 and E1 topics. Key learning outcome C constitutes a weighting of between 17 to 25% and concerns the analysis of performance. So we're drawing upon E1 knowledge like KPIs, for instance, when it comes to this key learning outcome. Meanwhile, key learning outcome E has a weighting of between 17 and 25% and concerns providing information for decision making. So again, contributing to the preparation of management accounting information and of course, providing information to managers to assist with decision making. So from this, we can see that P1 knowledge is going to be absolutely crucial to your success in the case study exam. It's essentially the foundation when it comes to this exam. And so you need to be absolutely comfortable with all aspects of the P1 syllabus. So if P1 happens to be one of your weaker areas when it came to the E1, F1 and P1 exams, this is something that you should definitely go over ahead of your OCS exam. Lastly, the last part of SEMA's description of your role concerns assisting with the preparation of the financial statements and answering queries regarding financial reporting and other financial matters. And this is directly related to the F1 syllabus, which is core activities D and F in SEMA's case study blueprint. So core activity D has a weighting of between 12 and 18% and concerns financial reporting standards, ethics, tax and governance. Meanwhile, core activity F is the smallest and relates to the management of working capital. Now, although the management of working capital is the smallest key learning outcome with regards to its weighting, I'd actually consider it a key area regardless, as it's very likely to come up in some form in your case study exam. So don't neglect revision of this topic just because it looks the smallest of the six. So I've given you a very quick run through of SEMA's key learning outcomes here. However, if you are unfamiliar with marking a case study and the core activities in general, we have actually produced a separate study text with practical information all about this. So I won't be covering them in detail here. However, by giving you a quick rundown and relating this back to your role as described by SEMA, hopefully this gives you a bit more of a signpost as to what to expect going into the case study exam.
as we can see by the amount of green highlights here representing P1, we can see again how crucial your P1 knowledge is going to be when it comes to exam day. So now that we've taken a look at your role, let's now scroll down and take a look at our introduction to the precinct company for this sitting, Treadcushy. Okay, so in the first line of the introduction, we're told that Treadcushy designs, manufactures, and sells a range of athletic shoes using natural and recycled materials. The company is based in a fictional country, Keyland, in mainland Europe, and we're told that the K-dollar is the currency of this country. So immediately we can see that the company has, or at least requires, three key areas of expertise. That is expertise with regards to the design of these shoes. After all, the better these shoes are going to look, then the better they are going to sell. Manufacture of shoes, of course, so if the company itself is manufacturing them as opposed to outsourcing them, as we're told here, then the company is going to need to be good at this in order to sustain itself in the long run. And of course, the company needs to be good at actually selling these shoes, marketing them, and so on. So three key areas of expertise for the organization. We're told that the shoes are made using natural and recycled materials. So immediately we're thinking of a sustainability and corporate social responsibility, that is CSR type of angle. Is this commitment to using natural and recycled materials going to be a selling point for the company, a point of its branding, and is it going to be key to selling these shoes? In terms of Keyland, a country in mainland Europe, we can think about the disposable income of the people in Keyland. Is this a wealthy country? Are people going to have enough disposable income to spend more on athletic shoes? So moving on, we're told that the company was founded in 2007 by two people who worked for the same major athletic shoe and clothing brand. We're told that these people are passionate about the, the environment, sustainability, and so on. And in fact, they also identified that in the athletic shoe industry in general, there seems to be a bit of a lack of environmental concern. The company started again in 2007 in a small workshop and by working closely with raw materials suppliers, they were able to actually start to produce shoes using these natural materials, things like wool, rubber, sugarcane, and castor beans. And it wasn't until mid 2010 that the shoes were actually launched to the market. So given that Sophia Grigg and Harry Blanc were working at this major worldwide athletic shoe and clothing brand, this indicates that they have a relevant experience that can help tread cushy as it grows and expands. So relevant experience from the founders here. Additionally, because there is a lack of focus on environmental concerns in the athletic shoes on the market, this indicates that Tread Cushy has a competitive edge here. This will be especially true if there is a social trend towards becoming more environmentally conscious with regards to the shoes that people are buying. As again, if people are going to become more environmentally conscious, more willing to invest in shoes that are made from natural and recycled materials, then Tread Cushy is going to benefit here. Further, we're told that the company works closely with its raw material suppliers, and so this relationship with these raw material suppliers is going to be key for the company's success going forward. We don't know how easy it is to find a supplier of these natural and recycled materials for athletic shoes, so ensuring a good relationship with these suppliers is going to be important. Further, the company, considering it's basing itself around this corporate social responsibility and sustainability kind of angle, we can infer that the ethics of these suppliers is also going to be important. That is to say, even though these suppliers might be supplying sustainable materials and so on, they need to be ethical in other senses as well. For instance, treating their employees in a positive way, as otherwise this could undermine the thing that sets Tread Cushy apart from its competitors. The sort of person who's going to be willing to spend more on natural and recycled material shoes are going to be also willing to spend more to make sure that the workers involved in the production of these shoes are treated in an ethical and fair way. As the company only bought its shoes to market in the mid 2010s, this is relatively new in the context of the athletic shoe industry. Big companies like Nike or Adidas have been in the market for much, much longer. So Tread Cushy faces a challenge here in terms of establishing itself in this industry. Further, we're told that although the company was founded in 2007, the athletic shoes were launched to market in mid 2010. So it seems as though the founders of the company are willing to invest a lot of research and development time in terms of getting their product just right. Further, we're told that initially the company only had a small workshop and further, all of the sales were made through the company's own website at the beginning. So if the company has expanded since then, it's going to have needed to invest it in a new factory, 
and perhaps other sales channels as well. So it'll be interesting to see what route the company took to actually carry this expansion out. So thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you found it useful. I'd just like to take a moment to talk about some of the different case study products we offer here at Astranti. All of these products are available together as a package as part of our case study course. However, they can also be purchased individually. So we have our exam technique series, which comprises both a study text and a video series. So in this product, we'll teach you how to plan your answers, analyze the case study material and manage your time in the exam. So all of these are vital skills that you need to have to make sure you don't miss out on any marks. We also have our theory revision series, which again is both a study text and a series of videos. So these talk about specific theories relevant to your case study exam. These are old topics that are frequently tested. And so this part of our course is directly tailored to the exams that you will be sitting. Additionally, we have our pre-scene analysis. So as part of this, there will be a video that goes through the pre-scene document point by point to discuss the most important aspects that you need to know ahead of your exam. Additionally, there will be a video that will talk about the top 10 most likely unseen issues that are likely to come up in the exam. Plus, we have the strategic analysis video. This will be talking about the key models taken from the SEMA syllabus and then discuss how they apply directly to the case study that you will be looking at. We also have our industry analysis, a comprehensive document that looks at the different aspects of the real world industry that the case study company operates within. So this will give you everything from an overview of the history of the industry to any issues relating to corporate social responsibility and protecting the environment, analysis of real world competitors to the case study company and overall trends in that industry. It will also provide 25 real world industry issues that can be used as examples in the exam. In addition to this document, there is also an accompanying video. We also provide mock exams, which are based on past case study exams and also based on the exact case study that you will be tested on. Therefore, they are designed to be as close as we possibly can get them to the actual exam you will be sitting. We also offer marking and feedback. So if you purchase this, you'll get a tutor to go through your exam script, tell you if you would have passed your exam and also tell you what you could have done better going forward. You'll also get comments on your exam technique. So all the different things to help you get as prepared as possible for sitting the real thing. We also offer question packs. So if you'd like to practice a specific part of the SEMA syllabus, you can look at a question pack directly tailored to that area. So you can get that vital practice in ahead of your exam. We also offer two all day masterclasses, one at the start of the course and one at the end. So the first one will be covering how to plan effectively ahead of your exam. Then the second is a revision masterclass, which will be going through all the material that you've been learning throughout your studies to give you a nice refresher before sitting that exam. So head over to www.astranti.com for more information about all of these case study products. Until then, I'd like to take the chance to wish you all the best of luck for your case study exam.